Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to be talking about my party for clearing Endless Voyage Stage 15 boss fight. Full disclosure before I begin, I actually am not entirely sure how the battle works. Instead, I cleared it with pretty much an ideal party design. So I'll go over the way my party is designed before jumping into the fight. So the, going over this party will take around, let's say, five minutes. So if you want to just jump into the fight, go to the uh, timestamp in the video description. So let's go over the party now. So my party, which is ideal, basically has two healers and then three characters who can output tons of damage because they have blood frenzy. All right, That's the basic outline. Juggler provides lots of healing via Sacred Beast Sanctuary in this fight because there's a lot of little tiny damage ticks. So he heals by doing that. Rosen Seal provides the passive healing effect from her talent, where after characters act, as long as they're within three blocks of her, they heal 2.5 times Rosen Seal's intelligence. The damage dealers all have blood frenzy, so that after every two attacks, they can attack once more. Okay. That's a basic outline. Crucially is the squad skills. Okay. The most important squad skill you absolutely should bring is Operation Mourn. Because each time a unit takes damage, it gets one stack of Mourn for two turns. And once Enly free, okay, sorry, once Enly friendly unit has three stacks of Mourn, all friendly units gain a 25% increase to attack and int. And this can be applied up to three times. You actually take, a, as I mentioned previously, you take lots of little damage ticks in this fight. So you very rapidly, you're pretty much guaranteed to have three stacks of Operation Mourn. In other words, you're guaranteed to have a 75% attack and int increase. So because of that, any character who is based on stat conversion is terrible for this fight. You're going to want character to a pure int or pure attack based for this very reason. Okay. So like, you know, Bozel that converts magic defense to int, for example, is, that will do barely any damage, stuff like that. The other two don't particularly matter. In my case, I just took two techs from the middle branch because as long as you have three or more heroes of different unit types on the battlefield, all friendly units gain a 5% increase to all stats. Right? The first one will make battlefield skills damage increase by 20%. The second one increases, uh, well, allows them to restore 30% of their max hit points. I just chose those because I can't use the first line. I don't have three characters of one type. And I don't think there's any really great ones on the bottom line either. Like this one requires five debuffs. I don't apply five debuffs. This one allows you to do some fixed damage addition, which is okay, but I think 5% more stats is better. And this one requires you to move lots of blocks and I'm not moving. So now with those things covered, let's go into a bit of the details of each hero, right? So first of all, Juggler is purely a stat buffer. He's bringing both Enduring Hope as well as Cheer. And that's because of the constant act against triggered by Blood Frenzy. So because of that, I'm bringing two stat buffing skills so that it can remain buffed up. And I also have Petal Storm just because it can do a little bit of damage to the enemy and maybe apply debuffs onto them. That can reduce 25% of the enemy's stats. In terms of tactics, because he's not attacking, I have him built for defense increase, 35%, magic defense increase of 30%, a full moon, all stat increase, and then a hit point increase of 35%. So he's built purely for survivability. Rosen Seal is built for pure intelligence increase. So there's an int increase of 30, int increase of 35, all stat increase of 30, and then a Sura Sword that provides all stat increase of 20% as well. I do have Blade Storm on her as well, so that she can block fatal AoE damage taken three times per battle. So that will keep her alive through a lot of things as well. As for the three damage dealers, well, they're all built for maximum damage. So Lucretia has Breeze, Magic Guide, so there's a 35% damage increase, 40% damage increase, Int increase of 30%, Int increase of 35%. Shaltir has 35% attack, 30% attack, 35% damage increase, and then a 15% attack increase. And then Rainforest has attack increase of 15%, 30% hero damage increase, 35% attack increase, and then 30% attack increase. So maximum attack for all of those characters. 
that's pretty much it. Not much else to say. I mean, gear-wise, it was just whatever they can equip. That's more or less it. The only thing is my Lucretia actually doesn't have an armor, but in the first place, she doesn't need an armor because she's never in range of the enemies. Right? She's always just attacking from extremely far range due to the goal. So that's the party. Let's jump into the fight now. All right. So I'm just gonna get started. I have my action order set as uh, basically Lucretia moves first, then Rainforest, then Shalpier, then Rosenseal, then Juggler, for what it's worth. Just gonna click start and begin. And on turn one, what I know is the magnetic goals actions are kind of set mostly, so it only starts off with a single target strike skill. So I'm going to just run the Arcane Golem uh, actually. Uh, the other thing to mention is you can see characters that have uh, blue auras and red auras. Blue represents north and red represents south. As far as I know, the AoE is super effective against south first, then it becomes super effective. Uh, sorry, it's super effective against north first, then it becomes super effective against south, and it just keeps switching or something like that. So, yeah. Just gonna start by maybe having Shell here. Trigger Enchanting Shadow. And then she is going to just do a regular smack on the magnetic wolf now. Because I don't have enough, or I don't have enough attack yet. Since I don't have enough Morn stacks at this time. Okay. Until I get lots of stacks of Morn, I'm not going to use my attack skills on her anyways. Next, why don't I just have Rosen Seal just jump in with a blade storm? Right. Since I'm hitting two characters and I have medium hearts special effect, she actually attacked again. It doesn't do much damage. I, it's more because I want to hopefully apply the Sharon debuff with her. And more importantly, keep triggering this Operation Morn effect. Notice how I now have three Morn effects. So there is this gain one Morn thing, right? and the characters have the 25% attack in in increase. So let's just have her end turn. Continuing to take fixed damage. There we go. So now we see Lucretia's int has increased. So I'm just gonna move the Oking Golem away and have... My Lucretia just smash down that character. Ooh, a little bit of fixed damage there on Shell Tier. It's okay because of Jumper. So, first, I guess Jumper has to trigger it. A cheer buff right now. It won't really benefit Shaltier, so I'm going to have to trigger another buff next turn. Is, but it's, it's okay. So, Enduring Hope heals up Shaltier a bit. And if I take some fixed damage, I continue to provide healing. Which would be sanctuary. So that raised Shaltier pretty much back to And now that I do have a decent number of stacks of different things, let's start attacking. Right? And, uh, yeah. Right. So now this turn, the magnetic gold does have 
it's it's AoE skill. So if I want, I'm going to start with Shaltier because she still has the uh, Paragon of Elegance effect to debuff. And then she'll trigger act again with Frenzy and trigger again. Let's have other characters attack. Right. So, Crusher Strike. Act again. Strike again. Might as well just... Magic Pulse. Juggler. And Rainforce. Strike. Trigger and act again. And blood Frenzy. Strike again. So we can kind of see the attack is steadily increasing as well. Which is good. So my damage output is steadily jumping. Now... It's not going to ever AoE me like this because of the way I'm set up, right? It hits three straight lines and I don't have any character that is I don't have two characters allowing him to hit me in three straight lines. And finally I'm going to cheer simply because Shaltier doesn't have any attack increase right now. Due to Paragon of Elegance. Seventy-one percent hit points. Moving summoned. So this turn, it is going to launch out this effect, right? Uh, sorry, it's going to launch out Magnetic Storm, and these guys. When killed, I believe they change your magnetic uh, effect to self. So, if I want to take it down, I can quite simply like this. Boom! Take a bit of damage there. Oh, it knocked two characters to no magnetism. Uh oh. Well, we'll see what happens. Whatever. I'm just going to maybe swap positions and keep refreshing skills. So now, attack. His attack always seals up my characters. Even if he doesn't attack, he heals up my characters because he takes a bit of damage. Those little one damage kicks. And I'm going to. That's crystal healing. So I have two characters without uh, direction. Let's see what happens. AOE. Nobody actually dies. Whole bunch of characters took a lot of damage. But so we're good. So this time around, I'm going to once again start with juggler striking because I need to restore some health on Lucretia especially. There's the little damage tick, there's the full heal. Second damage. So now, 
Lucretia will strike. Trigger a blood frenzy. Strike again. And we'll end the turn. Again. Okay, down to 34% hit points on this enemy now. Trigger and act again. There is four turns on this. I'm gonna attack now. Just single target. I'll probably use Paragon of Elegance next turn. So I'll have her act first. Before Rainforce does. And yeah, let's just enter with Rosen Seal. Who really is not doing anything <laughs> other than passive healing? Only four percent hit points now. Okay, so might as well run over and kill that thing. Take a hits on both my characters. And... Electric Pulse. And then... Let's Juggler Act first, right? Because I want Juggler... To provide healing to... Shaltir. Sanctuary heal. Sanctuary heal. Okay, that's better. Now I'm going to have Shaltir enchanting shadow herself, which restores her health. And then she can smack the magnetic ore for a close to 100k damage. Pretty good. Uh, let's just end her turn. Maybe Sean will kick in. I did. Should probably end uh, Rosen Seal's turn first. For the Sharon effect. Then have other characters act. Regardless. Battle's nearly done at this point. It's down to 10%, right? Two percent. Otherworldly force trigger. Which actually caused me to take a few E hits. But it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna mass heal like and finish the battle. And there we go. And we're done. Just like that. And with this, I can pick up one last tech. Uh, I don't even know whatever. Sure, whatever. I think it matters. And then I get the final rewards. And it's complete. 
congratulations on clearing and with that there is then unlocked the shores of certain doom which i will do a separate video on all right so yeah pretty straightforward battle once if you have a good party design so thanks for watching everyone i hope you found this useful and on that note nitro out